Hello and welcome to episode 1 of my old school RuneScape Iron Man series. Thank you everyone for the support on the first video. If you have not seen that yet, I recommend you take a look at that. Just so you see where the progress was prior to this video being released. There will also be a playlist linked down in the description. If you want to go check that out. Thank you everyone for the support on that last video again. And without further ado, we'll get into this, we'll get into episode one. We started off doing the worm task and managed to get 66 attack, which also netted us 85 combat. We were then able to do the dream mentor quest, which helped significantly with our nightmare zone points. During nightmare zone, we managed to get 67 attack. And also at the very end of the trip, we managed to get 68 attack. Once the trip ended, we went over to the bank to grab out our normal Slayer Helm in order to get it imbued. This will allow us to have an extra 15% accuracy and damage boost on tasks for both ranged and magic. As you can see, we had an extra quarter million points, and with some of the extra points, we also grabbed some of the redirection scrolls to help with some clues. And when, then we went back on to our Worms task where I managed to get 65 Slayer. With this level, we are now able to start doing some burst tasks with Dust Devils for some good ma magic XP. We also managed to pull an Adamant Square Shield, which will be useful for future clues. This task also provided us with 73 hit points, and we finished off the task, which left us with a total of 421 Slayer points. On screen now is the loot from the task. We only managed to get one superior. The coin drops are also not noted in Rune Light since we were wearing a Ring of Wealth. But the coins and alcohols managed to net us out at about 195,000 GP. After that, we had decided to go and get a task from Neve and hope that she had decided to be kind to us on the first task. But unfortunately, she originally ended up giving us a Black Demons task. After some thought on it, we, deci we decided we were going to go ahead and block these Black Demons since we weren't qu close to unlocking Mnemonics at this time. We had got a new task from her and she gave us a task of Blood Vells which will be nice for XP and some loot once we return back to Slayer. We noticed we were close to an herb lore level, so I went ahead and finished off 59 herb lore and can now clean snapdragons, but we're still a few levels off of being able to make super restores. Decided to move on to collecting some of the iron ore that we were going to need to use for the giant's foundry with our, with our goal coming up of achieving 73 smithing to make some adamant bolts. Along the way, we were superheating some of the iron, but at the very end of collecting it, we did manage to get level 71 mining. At this point, we didn't quite have time to start working on the foundry, so we did a few, a few high alks, and we managed to achieve 74 magic. This originally unlocks the Tell the Other Lumbridge spell, but more importantly, we're now able to boost with a Wizard's Mind Bomb in order to use the Super Glass Mix spell, which normally re requires level 77, which will be very useful to us in our crafting grind. After that, due to some icy weather that had came in, I was able to make some extra gains while AFK when I was ended up having to work from home, so I decided to cook all of the raw food that had been left over in the bank and managed to get us a few cooking levels. We started out by getting level 71 cooking, followed by 72 cooking, which now allows us to get scales from sacred eels. At 73 cooking, so we can now make dragon fruit pies in the future once we're actually able to grow them. We got 74 cooking and finally to 75 cooking. After running out of raw food in the bank, we had we decided to head on over to the Guardians of the Rift minigame. 
And while we were there, we got 55 rune crafting, 56 rune crafting, 57 rune crafting, as you can see in the chat there, 58 rune crafting, and finally, we were able to make it all the way up to 59 rune crafting. This level will allow us to make double cosmics, which could be very useful in the future. We didn't manage to get any uniques out of these rewards, but did get a good selection of extra runes. After the rune crafting, we decided to hop on stream and do some questing. We do stream most of progress live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash killzim underscore one. A link is on screen and will also be provided in the description. We started off the questing by doing the Client of Corinne quest, which gave us a 20% favor certificate and two small small XP lamps. We opted to use the lamps on prayer instead of herb lore as I feel it is a lot harder to get in the early levels and farm runs aren't too much of an issue. And we also used the favor scroll on Piscalarius as it is by far the worst uh, the worst favor to start on and get up to 30% in my opinion. But with this newly obtained 20% favor, we went on to complete the Queen of, Th Queen of Thieves quest to boost us up to 30% favor. Following along in our Zaya questing, we also started to do the Depths of Despair quest. During this quest, we had to visit the Archaeus Library and decided to grab both the Teleport book and to, and to grab the Soul Bearer the Soul Bearer book in order to start the mini quest to unlock the Soul Bearer. We left the library and continued the Soul Bearer mini quest until we were able to collect the damaged Soul Bearer. After this we continued on with the Depths of Despair quest and we were able to make quick work of the of the little snake boss that they've got. And then we came over back to the head of Hosidius and we turned in the quest. We then decided to continue with the la our last available Zaya quest, so we killed the Headless Beast in the Getting a Head quest, questioned how we were going to be able to claim a reward for bringing back the head of a beast that didn't have one. We found out in order to claim our reward, we had to create a grotesque clay bear head. We followed up this quest with the Garden of Death quest, which awarded us a solid 10k farming XP and hints strongly at a Desert Treasure sequel, which seems like it will be an interesting addition for the future. And that is where we will call this one a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and if you want to see more of the series and you want to keep up to date with what's going on, Subscribe to the channel. It'll really help get these videos out there. Have a good day.